Dennis Sarfate making his first appearance. What will you do to defend the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? Welcome to the Green Dragon Tavern, where we talk a little treason. I'm Zach Lautenschlager. And I'm Dennis Sarfate. This week is the general election for several states that hold elections in odd-numbered years. Um, it's something I'm sure you woke up this morning, and if you pay attention, anyone who pays attention to politics, you went on Twitter or any other social media, and you heard that it's time to grab your survival food and your guns and head into your bunker because some Democrats won yesterday, uh, this week on Tuesday. Um, it happens every couple years. Democrats take seats away from Republicans. And look, I'm not discounting this reality, but take a look at the states where uh, these elections are held. It's New Jersey, Virginia, and Mississippi are always the three states that do it. Well, look, New Jersey and Virginia were going to be problematic in any case. Mm -hmm. um, it's laughable to assume that, oh, Republicans are going to do well in those states. Mississippi, Republicans did fine, but in Mississippi, Republicans suck. And um, in Kentucky, Bashir won another term. Well, that's not surprising either. He's an incumbent. He won the first time. He's probably going to win again. And Bashir is quite the name in Kentucky. So um, on the whole, I don't think that this is overly shocking. I don't think. And the other reality, <laughs> Clint Youngkin is still the governor in Virginia, which means unless Republicans continue to cave, Democrats aren't going to really get much done. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to look at why is it that it happened, well, yes, Republicans do need to be a, do a much better job doing what they say they will do. That's why we don't like Republicans. Um, I think the true black spot this week is the vote in Ohio to enshrine o abortion as a constitutional right. Um, that is heartbreaking. And it was heartbreaking to watch uh, our side message on everything except the real reason why you would want to vote against enshrining abortion as a right. It's murder. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only thing that's going to motivate people. Um, all the rest of it is uh, somewhat irrelevant. It is tragic to have to deal with the consequences of committing abortion. It is going to cause serious problems in future, emotionally, um, mentally, physically, for people who are caught in that evil and who, unfortunately, some of them decide to commit that evil intentionally. Many do. Let's face the reality. Um, but that's not the reason abortion should be illegal. Um, we can make all kinds of decisions that harm ourselves and that the government shouldn't be outlawing. Abortion should be illegal because it is murder. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Ohio is definitely a black spot. And when you talked about Republicans sucking, um, they suck across the board when you deal with abortion. Um, I, I tweeted out today, uh, Republicans aren't pro-life. They just, they want to make their constituents happy. So they say the things they have to say, but behind the scenes, we know firsthand that they are some of the ones that kill bills. They're the ones that don't go for equal protection. Why? Cause they have to actually put their neck on the line and say, Hey, this is what I stand for. Um, and this has been in front of many Christian professing Republicans that hold office. Uh, I think it's sad. I think it's a thing that we need to address that people need to start holding their elected officials accountable. And, um, that's the only way this is going to end. The only way abortion ends was with a penalty. You can't tell someone they can't do something and then not give a penalty, try having kids and then tell them, Hey, no cookies before dinner. Well, what's the penalty? Well, nothing. Well, nothing. you're going to be dealing with kids eating cookies before dinner. And I, th and, and to, to, to talk about it. So, um, at a lesser level like that is not even close to what we're dealing with when the, when you're dismembering babies in the womb. So, uh, yeah, Ohio, you guys stink. Um, we need to do what's right. And I think you can point to the constitution of America and say that equal protection is the law of the land and that what they just passed in Ohio is actually going against the U S constitution. So, uh, there is a fight and it's ongoing and it's going to be ongoing, but great thing is, is that Jesus is reigning and we get to do our, what we do every day. So uh, praise God for that. Let's recognize, and I, I agree 100%, let's recognize that people who have committed abortion, women who have killed their own children, repeatedly say once they recognize that that is a problem and now we're dealing with the fallout. Mm -hmm. I wish, I wish it had been illegal because that would have got my attention. I would have seen wait a minute, that's a problem. It's what Abby Johnson said last week. Mm -hmm. um, recognizing as uh, someone who has been involved in abortion very personally that I wish it was illegal. Mm -hmm. I wish it had been illegal. 
um, that is the only way to recognize the seriousness of killing another person. L- let's be honest, abortion is killing someone. Mm-hmm. You can't mess around with that and say, oh, well, the person who, com- who committed that murder is just going to feel terrible for the rest of their lives. That's why we should outlaw it. That's absurd. And people who have been there acknowledge that. So we, we have to move beyond it and recognize that, um, first of all, the political consequences of recognizing abortion as murder shouldn't be the first concern. Uh, if you are elected in elected office, you have to do your job. Mm-hmm. Second, um, I am not convinced that they are as bad as we say they are. To this morning, every leftist uh, media outlet is trumpeting that people are mad about abortion being banned. That is true. There are people who are mad, but the 10% in the middle who voted, and then you really only need 6% to change uh, issue, Ohio issue one from lo- winning to losing, um, but there's a 10% spread. Those people are not the people who are trumpeting, shout your abortion. I'm so glad I got when I came back for seconds. You should get five. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's, not, that's not how Ohio uh, passed uh, an abortion amendment. Ohio passed an abortion amendment on the backs of people who voted for Trump. Mm-hmm. So what's wrong with the messaging? There's something wrong with the messaging, and I think I think it's fairly easy to identify what that is. We are not recognizing it for what it is. Who cares if it's not murder? Seriously, is mm-hmm. it really that big a deal if it's not murder? And I and I think that you have politicians talking out of both sides of their mouth. You have on one end saying this is our body, this is our choice, women's rights. Um, but you now during COVID and when that when that uh, shot came out of solution. They were saying, no, you must take it, especially to our military. Um, and it, that's the part where you start to see like, well, really, do they really care? And I think that kind of leads into where we're going today and, and, and who we have on the show. It's just, uh, you can kill babies, but when it comes to this, you will do what I say. And I think that's where there's a divide in this country. The Sentinel is producing, uh, a, documentary that will be released in series. Uh, Part one comes out this month, Seals Beat Biden. And we're pleased today to have former Navy SEAL Asa Miller and a regular contributor to the Sentinel uh, on the show. Asa, thanks for joining. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on, guys. So, Asa, um, this documentary features you a lot. Um, it's exciting to see it grow. It's exciting to see the difficult times uh, that uh, that came through your career perhaps become uh, something that will help change America. You guys certainly did succeed in fighting back against uh, not only an unlawful order, but an attempt to enforce that mandate on the American people at large. So thank you. Thank you for doing that. Oh, it was my pleasure. And, and me and all the guys who participated in this, I mean, we didn't do it for ourselves only. We did it for the country. And um, we're just proud that we were able to play a part. So, you know, the, the, the big picture here from my perspective is a failure in leadership. Um, and it is an intentional failure in leadership. It is a desire to use one's position in order to force the American people into a set of perspectives that they do not hold, whether that is government has the right to tell you what you can put you put in your body, to government uh, can force you to use the right pronouns, to government can uh, force you to pay for uh, reparations or other things um, through wokeness. Uh, these are things that, unfortunately, the Biden administration uh, is actively pursuing and wants to use the military rather than as the uh, constitutional um, tool for defending our country uh, as a bludgeon or a blunt object to force uh, societal change. So I know that uh, failure in leadership is something that you saw firsthand. Uh, what did that experience look like for you? You know, it's it's almost beyond even just failure of leadership it's a complete lack of leadership because there there are very few actual leaders in our nation um i can speak firsthand for the the military but also just to tie it in and as i was listening you guys talking about abortion and and the elections and such um whether it's republicans democrats all these guys there i don't see leadership um anywhere really in society and i think it comes down to two simple things which is discipline and accountability which are two key aspects and traits of being a leader um, if you make mistakes, you need to be held accountable and um, you'll have to just be disciplined in your in your 
day-to-day life. Um, and so what you see in politics is people too afraid to take stands on truth. Um, and, and so you don't inspire anyone to follow you and you lose elections in the military. How, how we saw that starting with the COVID vaccine was, hey, a, an issue or an order came down from an administration um, that was unlawful on its face. Um, they tried to fa- uh, force a, a legal um, experiment on the entire military and no, no um, person in a position of power who should be a leader, um, no one stepped up and pushed back. No one questioned it. And so they, they just tried to force this on us. So when uh, that happened, what did it start to look like? Obviously, you guys, um, many of you started pushing back. And as we'll see in the documentary, over 200 Navy SEALs, that is over that nearly, depending on how, how you count it, but it is right at about 10% of the active uh, Navy SEAL Corps um, said, we're not going to do it. Um, you had experience, direct experience with, I believe, you and 20-some 20, 20 others um, who, who at one, one point or another said, we're not going to do this. Uh, how did that play out? Yeah, so originally it, it started as kind of a word of mouth thing. Hey, you, like, you guys need to get this vaccine as soon as it comes out. Um, a lot of us were on deployment at my team at the time, um, overseas in Africa and surrounded by COVID. Um, it was not an issue. And yet they were trying to get us to get this vaccine. So that kind of raised some red flags and people started looking into it. We got home to America and that's when they started saying like, hey, in a few months, it's gonna be mandated. It's going to be mandated. You might as well just get it now. And so we're like, okay, wait a minute. Like, let's look into this. What is this? Um, And so, like you said, I think it was 23 of us originally um, stood up and said, absolutely not. We're not not getting this just from my own team. Um, And they just arbitrarily removed us from our command. Um, before it was even uh, mandated by the Department of Defense. Um, and that's how it happened for me. It was, it was different for everyone across the board. Um, and they just, they just took us away from our commands. They siloed us and started threatening us with, you know, paying back all of our training, paying back our bonuses. Um, SEALs get pretty large reenlistment bonuses. And a lot of guys had freshly reenlisted and they were getting, you know, threatened with paying back tens of thousands of dollars. Um, all to get this experimental vaccine. And um, there was no leadership, there's no guidance, there's no explanation of how this was you know, beneficial. There were no studies on it to show us that it was um, even safe and effective. Um, and so, yeah, it, it came down um, kind of randomly and haphazardly. And we, we wanted time to look at it and to, to um, make a educated decision and that that wasn't given to us. I think that's the, the crazy part is, you know, the FDA approves something. Usually it takes years, right? We're talking at, at a, a, a quick, uh, end would be five years. They said, I, I've looked it up on, on vaccinations. These guys approved this drug unanimously and were administering it out. And I just think of elite athletes. I think of the spe- the elitist of the special forces, to force these guys to take something that you have no idea what's going to happen. All those companies already cut their accountability. They weren't going to be held accountable for anything that happened. Um, and to force someone to do that, uh, blows my mind, especially like when you guys are smart enough to make your own decisions to say, Hey, this is where I see this. I'm not really comfortable with putting this into my body. Um, and now you fast forward to 2023 and the things that have come out on not only just one vaccination from one company, Moderna, but all of them have had issues and um, have been linked to certain deaths and all this. So, um, you know, I applaud you guys for standing up and saying, no, we're going to research this and kind of see what's going on first before you just stick us with this thing that you don't even know. Um, kind of crazy. It's a, it's a crazy time in our, in our past history that we'll look back on. And I think you guys led the fight for sure. Yeah. And, you know, and another red flag that we had was you mentioned all the, the side effects that have come out since. But at the time, like you said, there was no studies on this. There was no um, there was no time at all to test this thing. And yet when it came down that, you know, this order was going to be put in place, they were all of our leadership were given quotas like we need. You know, the goal was 100 percent. 
but then they were going to be judged um, and kind of graded, if you will, based off the percentage of people who got vaccinated wow. in certain amounts of times. So leadership, their, their main goal was to get a number pushed through. Um, it had nothing to do with health. It had nothing to do with troop safety or the mission, because like I mentioned, I was in Africa at the time and we were, we had guys who tested positive for COVID and yet they were completely asymptomatic. Um, at the time, a lot of them were actually on a mission and they were fine. They were able to continue doing what they had to do. And yet when they got back to our camp, everyone was put into solitary confinement for 10 to 14 days, whether or not you tested positive, they're put on starvation rations. Like these, you know, six foot two, 220 pound guys were eating, you know, one boiled egg and a sausage more or less for breakfast. And for what? They were completely healthy. They were, they were completely capable of doing their job, but leadership wanted to hit their quotas. They wanted to scare guys and coerce guys into getting these vaccines so that they could get promoted and look good to the boss upstairs. And, and that's ultimately what this was about. Wow. You know, that that's the important note that, first of all, of course, military members sign on the dotted line to say that we will accept medical treatments, but it is with conditions. And one of the conditions is it has to be FDA approved legally in order to mandate a military service member accept a medical treatment. It must be FDA approved. Well, the reality is, and Asa, you had direct experience with this, I know, as did many others, they were not giving you doses of the approved vaccine, which was only provisionally approved, and the FDA wasn't really even willing to stand behind that. But that's irrelevant because the uh, doses that were available that actually existed uh, were not approved as a legally different medically different, actually different uh, formulation. And so this was top to bottom an unlawful order. And in fact, six different federal courts have agreed as law, as well as the, I believe every board that has, and I, it is it's not every, it is virtually every um, court martial board has agreed that that was an unlawful order. And we have won again and again and again. And so it is very important to note that this was not about, oh, I don't want to take a shot. This is about the country. This mm -hmm. is about whether or not the government is going to be able to tell everyone, I don't care, you have to put this in your body anyway. Let's not forget that at the same time Lloyd Austin was announcing, or within a few days of Lloyd Austin announcing the entire military is going to get this, Biden announced, and we're going to use the Labor Department to make everyone in the American populace who works for a country that employs more than 100 people get it too, or you lose your job. We will force your company to fire you if you do not get this jab, okay? That's where we were. So it's not a pro-vax or anti-vax discussion. For those who support uh, the concept of a vaccine, which is completely rational and understandable, um, that's not what we're talking about here, mm -hmm. and now we all know it. And so recognizing that... In, in almost every other Western civilization, Western country in the world, um, the government was able to use the military to force you to comply. Um, that was the threat in the background. In, in the United States, because a small number of SEALs, 10%, stood up and said, no, one way or another, no, we're not going to do it. Um, and then you guys went public, and uh, as it ended up, 250,000 American servicemen and women looked around and said, oh, I'm not alone. I am not alone. This is what's going on. So that is an incredible story. It is incredible to see because, and I had the opportunity, I still look back and go, that gives me goosebumps to see mm -hmm. um, not, not, only, not only is it cool to watch, but we were there. Asa, you and I sat down and met one another in a in a undisclosed location somewhere on the East Coast, which is really how it was when we started. Um, and yes, we were fanboying because, wow, this is the most Navy SEALs I've ever been in one room with. Um, <laughs> it's the safest room in America, I believe. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, and yet you guys were being faced with something that you did not have the uh, resources to fight back against. And we had that opportunity to work together to, number one, bring the resources as much as we possibly could together with attorneys and um, uh, theological counselors and political advice. Um, and you guys stood up and took the hit. Um, we were able, at very low cost, 
to come and help, but you guys sustained the end uh, end of your careers as you knew it. Some of you I know are pay, still paying back um, penalties, basically, uh, for standing up. And then many are back uh, active duty, and praise God, uh, doing their jobs. So it, it's really awesome to see what you guys accomplished. Well, thank you, but also, you know, thank you for, for being there because we couldn't have done it without you. And, and I think you touched on something super important right there, which is when you guys came out, we had no legal advice. We had no, you know, we needed theological support. You know, we needed the prayers. We had no financial support. Um, and, and the reason for a lot of that was because they purposely siloed everyone off, right? And, and you mentioned 250,000 other service members who eventually stood up. Um, after seeing us and after Tucker was, you know, able to break it on Fox News, the story. Um, and that was all purposeful because we felt alone. We felt like we were the only 20 guys, you know, in the world who thought this was crazy. And, and that was by design. Um, and guys, you know, in the Marine Corps, Coast Guard, the Reserves, National Guard, they all felt the same way as well because their leadership also siloed them and tried to silence them, um, tried to shame them. And, and so that was why it was so important. It was a godsend, honestly, that you guys were able to come out um, through his providence, pulling the team together, stand with warriors. Um, Davis Younce, our, our attorney, was able to go on, break this story, um, and, and bring the general public into the fight and just raise awareness. And so we could start connecting the dots and, and creating a team that was bigger than just, bigger than just us. Um, and I think that's the major story that we need to take away from this is that um, we, we have to, we have to come together as, as American people to fight back against this because, um, it's not just COVID, you know, people might think, Hey, it's over. We won. Let's, you know, pat each other on the back and, and go back to work. But that's, that's not the reality of the situation. They just, you know, picked up where they failed and they're, they're shifting, lifting and shifting to, to other areas, whether it's abortion in the military, trying to circumnavigate, circumnavigate the, uh, the Hyde Amendment, or whether it's transgender, you know, ideologies that they're pushing and trying, they're taking people away from combat deployable billets, um, leaving them in the billet, but just taking them off the line so that they don't have to go and deploy, which decreases force readiness. Um, and, and they're trying to push these ideologies on an apolitical institution, mm -hmm. because as you mentioned at the beginning, they're trying to use the Department of Defense and the trust that it has with society to bludgeon the American people. And, and, you know, as people look to the military, they look to these, you know, men and women in uniform who historically are great leaders and responsible, disciplined, accountable individuals. They, they look to them and then they follow where they go. So by capturing this institution, they are able to push their radical ideologies much easier. And so it, COVID was just one symptom of a much bigger disease. And by telling this story, connecting these dots, we can continue to fight, um, which is, which is important. It's, it's honestly probably the most important thing we face right now is stopping this government tyranny. Yeah. You know, you guys are, when people talk about Navy SEALs, I see the boys at our church when, when the, the guys come by and stop by the look on their face is just, uh, it's inspirational, right? We know the dedication, like you said, discipline, accountability you guys have, um, many people have seen Bud's class 234 on YouTube, but you know, you guys affected so many people. When my sister saw this uh, break, I actually told her what was going on beforehand. But when Davis Younce got on Tucker and broke the story, she's an exec with Bank of America who was being forced to take a, a, the same thing, the shot. And um, she saw that and she said, the Navy SEALs aren't taking it. I'm not taking this. And so she fought it till the end. And you know what? She never got it and she never lost her job and she, she beat them they had to just make her stay at home. So she got to stay at home, but it was because she saw that, wait, I'm not the only one. And I'm, I bet you there are so many people across America that saw that story break and it gave them some kind of in, you know empowerment where they can say, you know what, I'm not alone. If these Navy SEALs, the best of the best, and these other special forces don't want to take this shot, then I'm not crazy. Because people were at that point, everyone, if you don't take the shot, you hate your neighbor, you're going to kill the old people. You know, you heard everything. But when you guys stood up and you said, no, we're not going to do this and made it public, you really did encourage a lot of the normal Americans who just work, you know, nine to five jobs, you know, five days a week. And so 
you, you're not going to know the, the spread of what this reached and the touch that you guys had, but man, I bet you it is far and wide across the board that you guys encouraged a lot of people to stand strong for sure. Courage is contagious, right? Yep. And, and it just takes, it just takes people willing to, to bite the bullet in the front and, and just to stand up, plant the flag on the hill and people will rally around that. And um, unfortunately as a society, we've gotten so nihilistic and self-centered that we're afraid to, to break out. You know, we're afraid to go against the tide, even though all it takes is one and you stand up and the tide shifts and the tide changes and, and, and we, we ultimately beat by them. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but at the time it, it wasn't looking like we would, it looked like we were going to the bridge. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just takes, it takes a few people, um, to build a team and, and we can beat these, beat these guys. You're laying your finger on something very important. It's to recognize that Navy SEALs are people and ha- that you have fears, you have concerns. And while you're trained to do amazing things, you, you can't just do that everywhere, every time without, without fear. Um, Navy SEALs do die in battle, even though uh, it is uh, an excellent uh, kill ratio. Um, the reality is you guys risked everything up to, uh, you, you were not risking your lives in this case, but you were risking your livelihoods and the life as you know it. And mm-hmm. I saw it. That's what blew me away as we sat together in September of 21 when the mandate had come down and it was clear this is going to happen. Here's a room full of guys who are uh, very strong, both physically and mentally. And the, just the look of... The world has fallen in on me. I don't know what to do. It was sh- was humbling, shocking to see that and to recognize these guys aren't just charging ahead to say, "Well, I'll just do whatever I have to do to preserve my career." Mm-hmm. They're standing. They're willing to stand up and say, "This is wrong. This is very wrong." And it's not just about, "Oh, I might get myocarditis or whatever the problem might be," because didn't even have know <laughs> how do you connect that in September of twenty one. Um. But it's if we allow government to require the American citizen to put things in their body, um, you, can, you can light the Constitution on fire and, and, and sit back and warm yourself by the glow. Um, it's, it's not that it's over in the sense that that's it, tyranny, and we're all going to camps tomorrow, but we have yielded something that we cannot afford to yield. And so standing up and saying, well, I don't know exactly what the consequences are. I do know what the risk is. Could go to jail for this. Could become a criminal. Go from uh, elite warrior, the, arguably the best warrior, in, in certainly in American history, um, some would say in world history, to felon. Hmm. To I don't, can't get good jobs. And this is a serious problem. Um, that, is, that is the weight of it. And to, to recognize that a few people who will stand up and say, I'm willing to risk it. In this case, it's worth it. It's the right thing to do. That's what I saw in your face, Asa. That's what I would came away saying, that guy is going straight for, no, it's an unlawful order. Um, and I remember saying, well, I get that, but that's not the only option here. You do have other options and it's not dishonest. And you said, well, I understand that, um, but this is, what I, this is what I believe I'm called to do in this case. And I said, okay, might be a little crazy, <laughs> but all right, I respect that. It and it worked out. God <laughs> blessed that effort to stand up and say, hey, yes, there are religious uh, objections to this. It's made with aborted baby cells. It's made with mm-hmm. the, the, ba- the bodies of aborted people. This is Nazi-level experimentation here. Uh, let's just recognize that. Um, number two, there are uh, medical ex- reasons, and people had them, mm-hmm. and you probably could have claimed both. But you said there's, there is a larger reason here. It is unlawful. This is an unlawful order, and it must be somebody's got to resist it on that basis. Or we are really giving up the, the main principle, and that's true. That's why and I love so, the title. That's yeah. why I love the title, Seals Beat Biden, because that's who they beat. Whether right. someone else is pulling the strings or whoever, he went with, with, with what he said he had to go with and he made it mandatory. Um, you know, you guys got families, you guys have, some of you have kids married for years and 
someone like you, Asa, who's getting married soon, you're going to want to have kids. And what if you would have taken this vaccine and come to find out later on that now you're sterile, you can't have kids, which is not something that I just made up. There's actually people that are struggling with that now post getting the uh, vaccine that ruins your life. You know, you don't get a chance to even have kids and don't worry about your job and, and, you know, your, your, the money you're making as a professional. And I'm not just saying seals or, or, or servicemen or women. I'm just saying people in general, like just put something in your body and you don't know that can possibly take away having kids later in life. That's a, that's a, a big thing that no one can pay you back for that. Like the government messes up and said, Oh, sorry, we messed up. We're going to, you know, reimburse you guys some, some money for what we put you through. Well, that you can't get that back. So so many things were at play in this whole thing. It wasn't just about, you know, we don't want to do this. It's unlawful, but what are the ramifications to our body, to our family, if we do do this? Right. And so I just think, man, I love the fact that the seals beat Biden and it's going to come out soon. And I'm just looking forward to it. I am as well. And, and on that point, it, it, it reminds me that um, something we haven't touched on yet is part of the fight at the beginning was simply putting in a request that, hey, we have some serious issues. You know, here they are, one, two, three. Can you guys just give us an extension? Give us 30 days, 90 days. Can you just give us some time to look at this? Look at the vaccine. Think about, you know, our conscience, our, our faith. Like, can you give us just a couple days to, to dig into this and figure out, is this, is this an issue or not? And they wouldn't even give us that. It was immediate. They wanted to push it through because, and the reason is because it was unlawful. And I want to unpack that a little bit. I don't want to just keep saying that. I want, I want to explain it a little bit to people. Um, the, the two, the two ways that you get a vaccine, because a lot of people will say like, Hey, you joined the military, you know, day one of boot camp. you know, you get all the vaccines on the planet. Not entirely true. And also all those vaccines have plenty of data. And, and while none of you know, none of them are hundred percent safe, you accept the risk that you're taking and you know the risk um, and they're FDA approved. So they can be mandated according to our law. Well, that were not, that was not these vaccines. There was no time. There was no studies on them. You had no idea of the risk you were taking and they were not FDA approved and they, they were under a, a EUA authorization, which in order to mandate that requires a presidential signature. So all Biden had to do was to sign a waiver. And he could have actually cleared up a lot of, he wouldn't have made it right, but he could have cleared up some of the unlawfulness of it. And yet he never did that. It's because the legal risk, and the legal risk to him and, and the White knew, House was, yes. was staggering. Absolutely. And yet he didn't have the courage. You know, he, how many times did you see him on news or, you know, his, his people parroting this message, how safe and effective it was. And yet he wouldn't even take the time, you know, he wouldn't take the risk to put his own name to it, which is, is being a coward you know that's not that's not leadership at all and and so that's that's just one like 100 percent clean cut no if ands or buts about it that is unlawful it is illegal you cannot uh, you cannot mandate an experimental drug no matter if you're in the military or not we're all americans we all have our rights mm -hmm. um so i just wanted to put that out there uh, kind of unpack that a little bit more for for people watching i think that's excellent I think that uh, the uh, important takeaway is stand up and do the right thing mm -hmm. because it's right before God, because it's right in honor of the people who have come before us, recognizing what our forefathers have stood and fought for of every color and creed, and because you never know, it might be what turns the tide. And there will be people who will go to their graves not knowing why they were not forced to put something in their body. And maybe, you know, you look how this, how this works down the road. If government can run over bodily autonomy, <laughs> you don't have a right to life. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. And so, you know, that... Which you no longer do in Ohio. Yeah, right. good point. Um, that little phrase in the Declaration of Independence, the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness isn't just a trite Americana, great, here's my flag and my paper mache Uncle Sam hat. Mm -hmm. um, it actually means something. It means that government can't just run you over. Uh, and that's important. And standing up for what is right might just lead to 
preserving that in future. We want to get up and we want to say, oh, look how terrible it is that uh, the legislature is in Democratic hands in the state of Virginia. This is a harbinger of, of what's to come in 24, blah, 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 wah, wah, wah. But are we willing to stand up and say, well, what can I do? I can't, and because we can't personally change the outcome of a presidential election, because we can't personally get involved in Virginia politics, we want to complain, point fingers. But let's take a step back and ask, what are the things on my plate right now that I'm supposed to be doing? That regardless of the outcome, I am being faithful before God, before the American people, and I am honoring the sacrifices that have come before. In the very least, you're doing that. And you are probably defending liberty and freedom in ways that you may not know and in ways that no one may ever find out. But that's why we produced and are producing Seals Beat Biden. You can go to sealsbeatbiden.com to watch the trailer and to sign up. Once you create an account, you can watch the uh, series for free. The first one drops in the next couple weeks. It will be in November. And so you can look at the first episode uh, and then the uh, decide whether you want to watch the others. Uh, but they will be coming out uh, in rapid succession uh, throughout the holidays into next year. And uh, Lord willing, uh, people will find out that if you stand up and are willing to sacrifice for liberty and freedom, it can have an amazing effect. Asa, thanks for joining us today. Appreciate yep, thanks, you. Thanks, Asa. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining. We'll see you next week.